Uh, welcome to another edition of Pack Attack. Uh, this week's question comes from A Rusty Fireplace. What is your opinion on PC gaming? Are you more of a console or PC gamer? Wow. Okay. With apologies in advance to the PC gaming community, um, I'm more of a PC gamer. And uh, I say that because I probably spend half my gaming time on PC games. Uh, the reason I spend time on PC games, and I hope Gary Wedbush isn't watching this, I can play at work. So I have Skyrim in my PC right now, and uh, I don't play console games at work because I don't have a television set in my office, and you know I have all the consoles at home. Um, I also play a lot of casual games. I play everything Zynga makes, so I'm more of a PC guy. What's my opinion? Uh, PC gaming is great. Uh, the, the experience is great. The graphics are great. Um, the, the guys who develop games for this are constantly striving to the state of the art. So you're always getting really, really rich, great experiences. Um, obviously, the games are a little different because the control scheme is a little different. I do see it merging, you know, so you're getting games like Battlefield, which is a PC game that becomes a console game. And I see the console guys kind of de-emphasizing PC. Um, I think you might get a flip back. I mean, I think with, with streaming services, effectively everything you play on on live is a PC game. So PC games have a, have a long, long, long life. And uh, I'm not sure we're going to have many more generations of consoles. I think we're going to have many, many more generations of PCs. So I'm a big PC gaming fan. Uh, I, don't, I will say that out of the, all the people out there who trash talk, the PC guys are the worst. They trash talk more than anybody. Um, and I didn't mention MMOs. I am not a big MMO guy, mostly because I get sucked in. It is too much of a time sink for me. Um, I like MMOs too much and, and I can't control myself. So those guys are the epitome of, uh, of uh, gamers. I have an interesting thesis about gaming and I think this actually will resonate with you. Um, and it really does pick up PC. I think of games the way I think of casino gambling. So if you ever have been in a casino, and again, I'm sure if you're 13, you went with your parents once, um, there's three basic types of casino gambling. There's Texas Hold'em poker. You have a little room, not very many people. Nobody goes in to play a hand of Texas Hold'em poker, quick hit and leave. You invest. You go in there, you spend five or six hours playing because you're, it, takes a while before you figure out the other players. Everything everybody does impacts you. So every move, every tick, everything they do. I think that's just like playing an MMO. You don't go in and play an MMO for one minute, you know, one, one raid and you're gone. You are in it for hours. Everything everybody does impacts you. It requires a huge time commitment. The game itself is very sophisticated, very much dependent on what other people do, just like Texas Hold'em. Then you have what, what they call table games in the casino. So the two that people know, blackjack and craps, there are several others. Um, you can play blackjack and craps for half an hour and have a good time, hour, two hours. Some people play 10. But pretty much no one goes and sits at a blackjack table and plays one hand. You invest some time. Um, you don't really rely as much on what everybody else does, but arguably in craps, you need somebody else to, to roll the right numbers or you're not gonna win. In blackjack, you need the person in front of you not to take your card or, or to not bust or to bust so that you can actually get the right card. So you're dependent a little bit. And again, you can enjoy yourself. You have to pay attention, requires some concentration. You know, you can't just keep throwing your money in in blackjack and not know when to hit and not hit. You gotta look, just like console games. I think it's exactly the same thing. You can enjoy a console game for half an hour. Many people play 10, but you can enjoy it for half an hour. Then you go to the other end of the casino, penny slots. That's Zynga games and cell phone games. They are largely mindless. You can sit there and have a drink. You can have a lap dance. You can have a conversation on your cell phone. You're just hitting the roll bar. You just keep hitting it. You're losing a penny at a time. You don't care. Just jamming away. It's fun. It's mindless. And if you look at the makeup of a casino, Far and away, the most people are playing penny slots. There are more slot machines than anything. Lots of table games, that's a console market. 
Not as big a poker room. That's the MMO market. Well, what's interesting is the table games, consoles are in the middle. The super hardcore guy is the MMO player, and I know we have super hardcore PC gamers too, so I'll include you guys. And the very casual person is a PC gamer. That's the Zynga person. So PCs, I think, are the most interesting because they straddle the super hardcore all the way to casual. Consoles are kind of in the middle, and I know you guys are going to, the PC guys are going to tell me all console players are casual and they don't know any better. Sort of. That's why they have, like, spin the wheel. You know, the, the what's the money wheel called? I can't remember, but anyway. They have stupid console games. So that's my opinion of PC gaming. It's the broadest appeal. It appeals to everybody. You got every kind of game you can think of. All right, our next question comes from Twitter, at Bauger15. Hope you spelled that right. Wasn't Booger, okay. Uh, how do services like Redbox and Gamefly pay for games? They pay full retail for copies they rent out? Nope, they pay wholesale. Uh, the publishers are, so far, supportive of game rental. Um, the publishers understand the try before you buy model. I think that they get that, you know, some people really do want to check games out. Um, I would say that the majority of people who try before they buy end up buying the game anyway. So I think it's, it's helpful to sell a game. And ultimately, you know, Redbox and Gamefly are an outlet for the publishers to sell an incremental, you know, who knows, 50,000, 100,000 copies of the game. Um, Redbox has 36,000 kiosks out there. So if you get carried in a Redbox, you sell at least 36,000 copies of the game and probably two or three or four copies of each game. So it's a nice outlet for the publisher. It boosts sales, and again, I don't think anybody is gonna pay $2 a day to play a game until they're done. I think they like owning it. When you factor in the all-in cost of a retail copy of the game offset by what you get when you trade it in a game spy, I think you end up with uh, you know, a comparable experience. Most people will play a game for more than two or three days. Again, I know there's plenty of people out there who say they finish every game in you know, three hours set, sitting. Uh, nobody finished uh, Skyrim in three hours. I've got it sitting here because I'm still playing the game and it's been two months. I'm never going to finish that damn game. Thank you fellow babies for joining us on this week's Pack Attack. If you have questions, you can submit them by clicking the link below or you can submit them to me directly on Twitter at Michael Pactor and please copy at Rohan Likes Pants because Rohan selects the questions. Thanks again.